President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday offered an unreserved apology on behalf of the federal government to the family of Mashoud Abiola over the annulment of June the 12th, 1993 poll, presumably won by the late MKO Abiola. He apologized at the special national honors investiture and award presentation to hearers of June the 12th, 1993 poll, which was annulled by the defunct Ibrahim Babangida regime. He said the decision to hold the event wasn't to open old wounds, but to bury negative sides of June the 12th, the frustration and agony. For more on this, we have in the studio with us a political analyst and founder, Yes We Fit Initiative, Thomas Wilson Ikubese. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Thank time. you for having me here. Yes, it's uh, quite, an, uh, 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 quite a feat, I would say, of this government to, well, honor MKO Abiola. And many people have said it is a good gesture, a good development, and all of that. But something really happened the day, it ha something really happened that day. Some say it was so touching for him to have apologized on behalf of the federal government and also the daughter of MK Abiola to give her that speech that was really so touching. But on the healing process, because this happened about 25 years ago. That's right. And the healing process has just started. Mm. One would say, or one would ask, how can we continue with this healing process where people were killed, people lost properties, loved ones were wounded, and so many things happened at that time. There's so much to be done in terms yeah. of healing. Yeah. How can the government sustain that healing process? It just started on Tuesday. Thank you. I think the first thing is to appreciate uh, Mr. President that he took the courage to uh, apologize to the family of Chief MK Abiola um, on behalf of the federal government. That is highly commendable. But the bottom line for me is beyond the apology, the lifetime of this administration and subsequent ones for that matter should reflect the spirit of June 12. If that does not happen, then the apology is of no substance. The life of Abiola, the 12th of June, 1993, it showed the day that Nigerians across borders, across religion, across ethnicity came together and voted a Muslim Muslim ticket for the first time. Now that spirit must be reflected in the life of this administration. The spirit of equity, the spirit of fairness, the spirit of justice, it must be reflected. Ikitia state election is coming. The government must not use federal might. It must allow free and fairness that we saw on June 12 to happen. When you are making an appointment, it should reflect across the Federation in the spirit of equity across the region. That is important. If we do not see that fairness in the lifetime of this administration, then that apology will have no meaning. So for me, it's a process that has begun, but that process should reflect in the life of the people, and that is when it will actually have sense. Speaking of which, I'm sure you had time to watch that broadcast of the special honors conferred on the lead actors of the struggle for June 12. That's right. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Iyocha Ayu had a lot to say to the president. He gave the president a piece of his mind. Um, Nobel laureate Walisho Inka also had a lot to say to the president. Yeah. And I also watched um, the activist Femi Falano say some uh, tough words to the president as well about what must be done. Yeah. Now, if you look at um, those statements and the life span of this administration so far, we've had time to assess this administration. How confident are you that in the spirit of democracy, um, which President Buhari started with that uh, event, how confident are you that he will implement you know, some of those observations made by those actors? Well, the observations made by those actors are very valid. And that's because we have seen three years in the lifespan of this administration. And uh, they are coming up to do what they have done. And like someone said, there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. One would say, oh, it's the politics of 2019 so that the president can get a vote for a second term. Well, there's no wrong time to do the right thing. But beyond that, the bottom line is that if you confer such an award, a posthumous award, and someone who is dead anyway, and which we agree that is the right thing to do to heal the hurtness. But the life of this administration so far has not really reflected that spirit of June 12. And that's why all of those activists spoke. You heard Professor Wolesho Inka when he said, 
that we should also have a hall of shame, the same way we have a hall of, of fame. And you, you, you saw Femi Fallon also making copious quotations. So for me, um, it is good that MK Abiola had been recognized. It's good that he's been posthumously awarded that, uh, that honor. But if we do not see that freeness and fairness in the life of this administration across board, then it really would not make meaning. It's three years. It's a year to election. For me, it's coming late. But at the same time, it's no late time to do the right thing, so it's a good thing. But in the spirit of sincerity, we should be able to see that fairness reflected in the day-to-day -day activity. Security agencies should not wait for the body language of Mr. President to carry out their statutory responsibility. It is a hallmark of corruption for agencies of government to wait for body language of the president to do their job. Right. So when that happens, it means we are not doing the right thing. Now let's look at the June 12 itself. You know, the election itself has been tagged the most freest and credible elections Nigeria has mm. ever had. That's right. The same questions people still ask, do we, can we have that kind of election again we can have that kind of and election. how can we ensure that we follow that same pattern yes. that we had about 25 years we ago? don't have to follow that same pattern things have evolved beyond that option a for people having to queue behind candidate we've gone beyond that now we are talking about electronic voting and thank god that that has been passed in the amended electoral act and some people are saying that oh there is no power supply to power the bank but for me Voting should be purely electronic. Accreditation, electronic. The voting itself, electronic. If there is a problem with the power bank, as INEC is going to drop uh, staff at each of the units, let them go with I better pass my neighbor generator and drop there, you know, so that we will not have problem of, of power bank. So for me, going electronic, certainly, and the fact that now you have to transmit the result of the election from the polling unit straight to the collation center, that's a plus plus. So there's no reason why we should not be able to have a better election than what we had in 1993. Well Thomas Wilson Ikubese, founder um, Yes We Fit Initiative. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having for me. For your time and thoughts on TBC News Hour. Yeah.